Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECMWF 30 day uh, extended model for today's second video. So it's our 30 day uh, forecast for the UK and for the rest of Northern Europe as well. And I shall get on that for you uh, very shortly. Just say about the first video released today was our UK weather forecast. So at 7 a.m., I'll uh, have a uh, very uh, quick forecast, just uh, three minutes or so. Um, you know, looking at weather for today, tomorrow, and, and, and the next day, and so on. So, uh, have a look at that if you have not yet done. So, it's a nice little, uh, nice little new feature that we have uh, brought uh, into the channel, and uh, and yeah. So, so have a look at that if you haven't yet caught up with our new UK weather forecast release at seven AM on the channel every morning. Um, going to be back later on your ten to fourteen day. We'll include all of regular features. Bring you up to date, of course, with the uh, chance of this big old northerly blast over east about to be coming up later on today. Right, let's have a look at the uh, ECMWF band for the next uh, few weeks. So we're going to start off with the week one mean sea level pressure anomaly. This is going to take us from the 29th of March to the 5th of April. The coming uh, week will have high pressure building out into the North Atlantic, but still ridging into western and some central parts of Europe as well. So a large area of high pressure becoming centred in the North Atlantic. And we can trough of low pressure digging in to Scandinavia. That's going to, bring, uh, that's going to be pulling colder air into Scandinavia and low pressure in the Atlantic probably affecting parts of Spain and Portugal and bringing some heavy rain perhaps uh, through to them. This is the uh, week one 500 millibar height anomaly from the North Pole view down again takes us from the 29th of March uh, to the 5th of April so uh, again the coming week has the above average heights in the North Atlantic extending into Western Europe as well, below average heights across northern Scandinavia, and possibly putting some colder air into the north of uh, Europe as well. But most places are dominated by that area of above average heights, that area of high pressure. So it's a mild scene across much of uh, Europe in the week ahead. It is a little bit cooler in the southeastern corner from the uh, Black Sea, going down into Greece and Turkey. A little bit cooler there. And just to the northwest of the UK and Ireland, it's a little bit cooler there, especially around Iceland. That said, the majority of Europe, from Scandinavia all the way down to Spain and Portugal, and from western Russia all the way into Mediterranean, is milder than average. Quite significantly so, with those orange colours there. That's taking the temperature to around 3 to 6 degrees uh, above average quite widely across many parts of Northern Europe. So a very mild week coming up. And the precipitation anomaly looks dry uh, through large parts of Europe. It is a little bit wetter in this uh, northeastern corner up here around the Baltic Sea and going into the northwest of Russia. Uh, Norway is also rather wetter than average. Some northwest parts of Scotland looking a little bit wetter than average too. And the extreme southeast of Europe, again, the Black Sea going down towards Turkey, perhaps, and, and some parts of the east of them. Just a little bit on the wetter side there. There are the exceptions to the rule, though. Most places are drier than average across Europe in weekend, from Ireland, Spain, Portugal, the UK, and the West, all the way over uh, to, uh, to Eastern Europe uh, in the east. Uh, you know, most places are looking drier than normal, especially through, through like, the Med, much of the Med, coming out drier than average. So high pressure in your sensing through most areas for the first week. Go through the week two, which is the 5th through to the 12th of April. Quite a significant change taking place then. The high pressure has gone up to Greenland again. Back to what it had uh, on and off through the winter, of course. So uh, trough of low pressure then extends down through uh, northern and western Europe. And a ridge is over on the eastern side of Europe. So this ridge on the east side of Europe probably pulls milder air or warmer air up the eastern side. Conversely, though, uh, we probably see colder air. Uh, with a dip in the jet stream of 500 millibar flow, dipping through northern and western parts of uh, Europe. Let's have a look at the week two 500 millibar height anomaly, see what that's doing. So again, it looks unsettled across western Europe, doesn't it? And potentially quite cold, below average heights extend down the west side of Europe, blocking around Greenland and another area of high pressure over on the eastern side of Europe, a jet stream getting something a little bit uh, like that. So definite trough in the 500 millibar flow through the west of Europe. So this is likely to be a colder week across much of western uh, Europe. So there we see it, temperature anomalies uh, from, the uh, from the 5th through to the 12th of April, below average through Scandinavia and go down into Ireland and the UK as well, especially more northern and western areas. Cool down through much of Germany, low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, France, and Spain, Portugal as well. 
back to average temperatures there. What warmth there is, is more across central and eastern parts of the Med, and then running up the eastern side of uh, Europe, along with those southerly winds, of course. Precipitation anomalies for week two. 5th through to the 12th of April, uh, a little bit on the wetter than average side of these far northern and uh, northwestern parts of Europe. So uh, once again, that's where the trough is extending down, where side of Europe drier than average to these eastern southeast areas with near normal precipitation uh, in between. Let me go through to week three, which take us from the 12th through to the 19th of April. More changes. So uh, we still have a legacy of a little bit of high pressure up towards Iceland. So still a little bit of a blocking signal there. However, it looks like high pressure is building across many parts of uh, Europe once again. This should start to pull up milder air from the south uh, into, into Western Europe, I think. So this should be starting to turn milder across most parts of uh, Central and Western Europe as we get through to week three. 500 millibar height anomaly uh, for the 12th through to the 19th of April looks like that so we do still have that legacy of the blocking around greenland but i think this ridge building across uh, much of europe is like the main driver in this week which does or should pull uh, pull milder air up from the uh, from the south across much of europe there one difference is this, or one exception is like scandinavia where we've got this trough through here that probably keeps the cold air digging in from the north and from the northwest. Let's have a look at the temperature anomalies for week three. That's how looking. Yes, we see a gen, gen, generally uh, sort of milder week uh, across many northern and western parts of Europe. So above average temperatures from like the far west all the way over to the far east. Again, most parts of Europe are looking much, much milder there through the middle part of April. And the week three precipitation anomaly uh, doesn't go particularly uh, drier though. So still a little bit on the unsettled side actually for northwestern parts of Europe. So despite that rich building uh, across many central and southwestern parts of Europe, despite that, we're still bringing low pressure in off the Atlantic seemingly into northern and northwest Europe. So Scandinavia down to UK and Ireland, possibly even northern France, still a bit, little bit wet average. This eastern and southeast part of Europe again uh, looking drier the norm Mediterranean wise, it's dry over on the east side of the Med, near normal precipitation in the western part of the Med. Uh, then we go through to week four, which is going to take us from the 19th to the 25th of April. Very weak signals by this point. No particular signal other than there's a bit of a trough of low pressure over Scandinavia. Otherwise, there's nothing else really uh, to work on there as we go into the final sort of full week of April. Uh, 500 millibar height only looks a little bit interesting though because that shows a trough of low pressure um, within the 500 millibar flow uh, across Scandinavia and back in, into the west of Europe with the uh, size of a mid-Atlantic ridge. So this could be turning us back to something more and southern colder again across northern and western Europe uh, as we go into the into the last full week of April. Some higher pressure down into, into the Mediterranean could bring some hot air into the Med, maybe the first real genuine push of heat from Africa into the Med uh, in that week. The uh, precipitation, the temperature normally I should say, looks like it's cooling down again across northern western parts of uh, Europe. So definite size, uh, you know, after a milder mid-month, it goes cooler later on. Many parts of southern Europe looking uh, mild or warm, uh, and eastern Europe looking pretty uh, warm as well. And the uh, precipitation anomaly from the uh, 19th to 26th of April. Again, very weak signals, but does hint at light being a bit wetter than average through western parts of Europe. Really, so Scandinavia, if anything's on the slight wetter average side, uh, we've got uh, we've got sort of uh, Germany, the Low Countries again on the wetter than average side. So maybe a little bit colder and more unsettled there for Northern Europe as you get through to the latter stages of April. So that's the 30 day look at. I'll just run you through uh, weeks five and six data very quick. This is week five. I mean, so pressure anomaly, very weak signals, but a bit of a, this is the 26th of April to the 3rd of May, by the way. Um, a bit of a sign of a mid Atlantic ridge there could keep things cool and unsettled for northern Europe. Uh, the 500 millibar height anomaly, again, very weak, but once again, we have signs of a mid Atlantic ridge could keep northern and western Europe rather cooler with like northwesterly winds at the very least. The week five temperature anomaly looking generally above average through southern and eastern. Northeast Europe cooler though, perhaps out in the west and in the northwest. And the week five uh, precipitation anomaly 
Very weak sea move, but possibly hinting at being still a little bit on the wet side uh, for northern parts of Europe. And then I'll take through to week six, which is going to be the uh, 3rd through to the 10th of May. That's how it looks. Again, very weak signals, but still ongoing signs of this mid-Atlantic ridge. As long as we have this mid-Atlantic ridge, the jet stream uh, and the wind flares likely be doing something like that across the northwestern parts of Europe. So a mid-Atlantic ridge is never particularly good news if you want warm and dry weather because it'll tend to pull the jet stream down on the northwest southeast alignment into western and northern Europe and will tend and that will tend to bring low pressure down uh, with it. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly and again you see the size of that mid-Atlantic ridge which is very likely not guaranteed but very likely to send a jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment rather like that so uh, the temperature normally you won't expect it to be particularly exciting for northwest europe and indeed it isn't still hints at being a little bit on the cooler than average side for, for much of northwestern europe it's southern eastern parts of europe look like they've got the warmth through uh, the latter part of the spring and as we get through to the week six precipitation anomaly again it's really weak signals um but but i would have thought you know it could be quite unsettled for western Parts of Europe, if that jet stream does align on a northwest southeast line, conversely, the eastern southeastern part of Europe could be drier. Right, that's it for your Friday look ahead uh, for this week. Going to be back. Remember, just a snapshot of what Mon is showing today. So, any forecast beyond five to seven days comes with health warnings. Um, so, so yeah, don't take it too seriously. But the ECM has been quite consistent, I think, over the past uh, few weeks. Right, so that's it for your Friday day look ahead. We'll be back later on with your 10 to 14 day, which will include all our regular features. So, come back for that then. Uh, we'll bring you up to date with what's happening over Easter and the chance of this. Big old northerly blast we'll be talking about in the videos later uh, on today. So uh, that's coming up soon. Uh, for the ECMW 38, uh, look at that. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.